Well, one thing that we've seen, I mean, you know, in terms of the surgery itself, I mean, routinely the surgeries are less than two hours. Um, the blood loss is very minimal. The chance of transfusion is is routinely less than 1%. So, you know, unless somebody has, uh, you know, some significant bleeding disorder that we didn't know ahead of time. So it's, it's very rare that we'd have to give somebody a blood transfusion. Um, the risk of complications on this, again, are, are very low as well. The things that we really look at is, number one is, is the pain factor, is that most patients will go home the next day after surgery. They have very little discomfort afterwards. And even though we do give them narcotics, a majority of patients never even touch them and they just take Tylenol after that. And then we can take the catheter out earlier, which is obviously uh, can be a little bit of an albatross for patients in terms of having a, the, the catheter in the urine channel because they want to get that as soon as possible. So we can do that because we actually do what's called a running suture inside the urine channel because by running that we make it watertight and that'll heal up quicker. So we can get that catheter out sooner and then we get the patient back to work sooner obviously as well. So things that we look at is that um, we try to make sure, number one, we do an, a, a good cancer surgery. And so right now, we're at least as good, if not better, than uh, almost all of the open surgery uh, statistics that are out there. And again, those are becoming more and more remote because most of the surgeries now in the United States are done robotically. And again, we've got one of the largest experiences with that. And the second thing we look at is incontinence. And what happens is after the prostate's been removed, the urine channel goes, we have to stitch that back to the bladder. Now the challenge that we have is that sometimes the urine channels are a little bit bigger, and sometimes you know, patients can actually have you know, an underlying problem with an overactive bladder, and there's a number of different factors that can go into that, which make some patients, uh, their rehabilitation from that a little bit, you know, that can be somewhat more prolonged. But as we've seen, certainly over the last five years, I've been doing robotic surgery since 2002, and I can tell you that doing from an open surgery surgery perspective and going from robotically and doing it laparoscopically we can really make a very what we call that from a bladder neck perspective and really and really hone down on that in the sense that we've actually seen significant improvement with incontinence and and it's not unusual that that you know if we have younger patients i.e. you know under the age of 65 that a majority of those patients were hopefully within the first four to six weeks actually have very little problems with incontinence at all and then of course the last thing of course is erectile function wise which is the ability to preserve the erections and we continue to to approach that academically in the sense that we try to make sure that we spare as many of those nerves as possible. But those nerves aren't big, thick nerves like my pinky. They basically are small little hair follicles, for lack of a better term, that go into what's called a plexus that runs alongside of the prostate. And our job is to gently peel those away. So we have a number of techniques that we utilize that minimize the, the trauma and the damage to those nerves to, to improve the ability for those nerves to actually come back into function. So. The goal really is, and really this was the whole goal of doing any type of robotic or laparoscopic surgery, was to minimize any of the side effects on that and getting them back to their normal lifestyle sooner rather than later. So our goal really is that within the first several weeks, routinely a week with a catheter, a week maybe of a little bit of rehab time, and then routinely within two to three weeks after surgery, we get them back on the horse, so to speak. So we get them back you know, golfing and doing the things that they like to do, and then uh, there's really no restrictions after about you know, three to four weeks for the most part. Thank you.